showing you this lovely Hornby R150 B12 steam locomotive in Northeastern Railways livery. The all black livery as you can see there. This is probably one of the oldest models I've got in my collection. I bought it used from Hattons. The code is R150 and research will show that this model was produced in 1977. That makes it over 12 years older than me. So it's something that has to be treated with care, but it's also a surprisingly good runner. We'll have a detailed look at the locomotive a bit later. Let me just tell you a bit of history about the B12 class. Uh, Wikipedia tells me that it was built between 1911 and 1921. It's a 460, which means you have four leading wheels, six main driving wheels, internal cylinders. That's why you don't have any valve gear visible externally. And this particular model also has an interesting feature in that it chuffs. Yes, it chuffs. It makes a chuffing sound through a surprisingly simple way of doing it. So without further ado, let's set it on its way, shall we? Forwards direction. Here we go. And it stops on points. I'll explain why that happens sometimes. So, as you can see, for its age, it's still a fairly nice runner. It did stutter on the points and I will explain to you why, why it did that when I do a bit of a detailed look at it. So that's coming right up. Stay tuned. So here is the locomotive and tender. Let's take a look at the locomotive first. Put the tender to a side there. So let's look at the base plate first. As we can see, I don't know if you can see it there, but it says built in Britain. Yes, this is one of the UK or Britain made Hornbys. Well, it's from 1977, so that's no surprise. You've got the old style Hornby Railways logo there. You've got R150. Got a leading pony truck here, six driving wheels. Interestingly, observe how the middle wheels don't have the flangers to grip the rails. That is so that this model can go around tight radius curves. Because as you know, in a model railway, your curve radius is far tighter than what anything you'd find on a real railway. I suppose it's one of the constraints of trying to model railways. So that's how Hornby dealt with things like that in the past. Now you have axles which can move a bit laterally. So and there are other solutions but for this what they did is they just made the center driving wheels flangeless they're still driven wheels though because you can see there is a connecting rod between all three sets of driving wheels another interesting thing is the way this loco picks up power so you can see that for this side the wheels pick up power so you've got two pickups there and that power is picked up via the chassis yes this chassis is live so to speak with power for this side we've got separate pickups, metal pickups that contact the rims of the wheels there to pick up on that side and the wheels themselves, the inner part is plastic hence insulating it from the chassis. So it's a very interesting arrangement but that also means this loco only has two pickups per rail, four pickups in total and that explains why it tends to start a bit on points when you go slowly. There just aren't enough pickups because points have a large plastic section in them for power isolation and that kind of thing. There are ways to rectify this issue. Most modern Hornby and other brand locomotives use tender pickups as well, where the tender is electrically connected to the locomotive and then you automatically get three to four additional pickups per side from the tender. But this one, well, it doesn't have that. So that's why it slightly starters on points. Not a big deal, not a deal breaker. As I mentioned before, this was a used or secondhand locomotive from Hattons. Therefore, it came with a few blemishes or damages on it, which were notified to me via the listing. One is that it should have a lamp there, but that's not present anymore. So I suppose I can maybe get something 3D printed later. Other is that it's missing a buffer there. Once again, you can easily buy replacement buffers. So that's not a big issue for me. And I must say for something from 1977, it is a beautifully made model. You can see the whistles. There are actual metal pieces there. Inside this has got a Hornby X04 motor. I'm not going to take it apart because it's a 
to be honest it's quite a fragile model and i try to avoid taking it apart as much as possible so let's look at the cab detail you can see that a driver has been added and the cab detail is has there has been some painting and picking out done by the previous owner which is fine i think that's fairly nice add some character to the model if you will today's models have featureless cabs and it's up to the user to you know do your own detail kind of thing i've added crew for some of my newer steam logos now let's look at this interesting tender on the face of it it's a pretty light piece of plastic it's got plastic wheels plastic chassis it's light this thing i very very light i mean but you might have heard and i mentioned the chuffing sound that comes from the tender how does this 1977 loco do it there's no electrics there's nothing digital in it it's a very simple mechanism check this out you see that little tab on the wheel there as you rotate the tab it pulls that little piece of plastic there can you hear that so when you there we go i hope you can hear that so very simple mechanism but gives a kind of half realistic chuffing sound how innovative they were back in those days in the pre digital era today's locomotives would have a digital decoder a dcc decoder in there they'd have a speaker possibly in the tender about several wires running between the two and that's how you'd get all your sounds and lights and all that stuff but in 1977 this is how hornby did sound so there we are and now let's have a final session of seeing this loco in action and enjoying the chuffing sound once again i got to say even though it's very low tech and low quality it has a certain nostalgic charm to it So isn't that quite nice how it makes such a well half realistic chuffing sound with surprisingly simple technology so that's it for my review of this R150 B12 class Hornby locomotive if you'd like to see more exciting videos on model trains model cars tech reviews and other stuff be sure to follow my channel more subscribe if you like cuz I'm planning to release a video every week for this year as far as possible in the meantime thanks for watching and have a good day